Hello, I'm Jody Wolf. You're watching Exposed. Today is October 29, 2015, 2.21 a.m. Birmingham. Topic, we have three more wars. I believe it's going to be the Psalm 83, the Ezekiel 38, 39, and I, I don't know which comes first, but one of them, I think the Psalm 83 is going to be a really small one. Just something that will correct the boundaries of Israel, where it is now. And then the Ezekiel 38, 39, where God puts the hook in the jaws of Russia and drags their behind into their heart's desire, and that's war with Israel. And I think the hook's in the jaw because Russia's here, and the buildup is tremendous. It's far more than what's needed to battle ISIS. I can say that. So we don't know. I I believe the Ezekiel 30 at 39 war is, is here. And uh and then you have Armageddon. That's the final war before we go into the thousand year millennium. There'll be thousand years of peace. Christ will rule and reign for one thousand years. There will be any kind of sin will be frowned upon everywhere, really frowned upon. And people who sin would actually feel horrible about their sin, but unfortunately, it won't stop it. But for the next thousand years, earth, the people, the us, will be replenishing the earth with, with billions of people. And those who will be replenishing the earth won't be Christians because we have been taken up before the final war. We're gone. We escape that war. So the people that didn't accept Christ or that were not raptured will remain here. And many of those will accept Christ during that seven years. Most won't, but many will. And the ones that go on through into the beginning of the thousand-year millennium will be the ones who will repopulate this world. So just say a thousand years go by, each year, those who came through from the tribulation, I mean, yeah, from tribulation to the thousand-year millennium, each year, their life expectancy will go up. I'm going to say by 100 years, life expectancy may be 150 years. And you get into 200 years, life expectancy may jump up to 300 years. You, you, go, you go, get on in halfway, then your life expectancy may be, that's it. I mean, you live beyond the thousand-year millennium. But... There will be another war. There will be another war at the end of the millennium because Satan's put away, but he'll be loose just for a little while and he will draw the masses, the numbers like the sand in the sea, back to his side. These will be the ones who did not accept Christ that were born during the tribulation. Keep in mind, those that came through the seven years and into the millennium, the ones that came into the millennium did receive Christ. The ones born during the millennium have to receive Christ. If they do not receive Christ, then they will go to the great white throne judgment to be judged. These will be numbers that's great. There may be 10 billion people born during that thousand years because the life expectancy keeps going up higher and higher with, with very few dying and millions being born. It could do that. But there may be three or four or five billion that will not have received Christ at the end of that thousand years, 
and then Satan is loose for a little while, they may go to his side. The Bible says many will go to his side. Once again, they think that they can defeat God. They think they can sit above God. And this is what Satan has told them, and they believe Satan can do it. And um, simply put, Jesus say, y'all just hang on, I'll be right back. And it's over. I mean, there won't be a battle. How in the world do you think, I mean, do you think the battle of the army tanks? Jets. AR-15s, <laughs> M- MK, you know. Look, if we come this far in a hundred years, how far will we go in a thousand years? I mean, you think uh, that movie, Back to the Future, you think that's fut- futuristic. Multiply that by about, about a thousand times. I mean... We'll not know, but we won't have conventional weapons of war. There just won't be any. But somehow Satan will probably bring some with him. And that's okay. He's going to be putting, put down anyway. You know, either way he comes, he'll still be put down. But during that thousand years, again, people that sinned, I mean, the whole community, when I say community, I'm talking about the world, will frown on sin. I mean, really frown on sin. So people will be sinning not in the open like they do now, but they're kind of in the closet still through the whole millennium because they know that it's frowned upon. And they know that's enough to convict them. So that's why they kind of keep it in the closet. But when Satan is released, just for a little while, that's what the Bible says, then that's when all of these hundreds of millions, if not billions, will come out of the closet and go to his side thinking that they can stand with Satan and defeat God. Well, do they really want to defeat God or or they just think that he's got the winning side? If they hadn't learned by then that God is almighty, then they'll never learn. And it's not that they don't believe that Satan can or can't win. It's just their heart can't be changed. Some people are like that. You you just can't change their heart. Like, like God said in Ezekiel 38, 39, see, Russia don't really, they say they really don't want to come over in Israel to fight. But yet their heart's desire is to stand with Iran and and cut Israel off and push them into the ocean. And I don't mean just the people. I mean every, I mean the land. They want to make it disappear. That's in the heart. So God has said to, to Gog and Magog, I'm going to put a hook in your, in your jaw and I'm going to turn you around and drag you in here to do what you want to do. I believe God's put that hook in the jaw of Satan. I mean, of Gog and Magog, which is Russia. You know, that's my belief. I may be wrong. But even though eternity is is right behind the thousand-year millennium, just the second Satan is cast into hell for eternity, then paradise never is in. There's no night there, no need for night. Again, you want him cast a shadow. The light of God is everywhere all the time. You won't even have a bed in your house. You'll never be tired enough that you want to lie down. 
There's no time in heaven. There's no limits in heaven. And and that's the best part. There's no limits. There's not going to be a certain place that you have to stay away from or a certain food that you can't have. All limits have been removed. And that means exploration. That means that if you want to take off to, to a star system that's a billion light years away, have at it. I mean, if you, if, if you wanted to walk there at that pace, you'd have time to walk there and back a billion times. And yet, time hasn't begun to start yet. Eternity is forever. You can remove this world one grain of sand at a time and move it a billion years away. In the next billion years, you come back, get one more grain of sand and go. You can do that. Remove the whole world and then put it back, back and forth. Time hadn't begun yet. Time is forever for eternity and it's for bliss. It's something that every moment, you know, it gets better and better and better. I don't know how that can happen. But the Almighty has a plan. He said that no horse can imagine. He said, your heart is never imagined and could not imagine the things I have prepared for you in paradise. Well, I can't wait to get there, guys. But the final war, unfortunately, will be 1,000 years from about now. But it will be put away and it'll be end forever. No more limits. Whatever you want to do, and you'll not want to sin. Jody Wolf Exposed.